Hi, people. So um, this is just a very quick little point I want to make before getting into this one. Um, I am well aware that in a lot of my videos, people don't watch the whole duration, but I had a situation recently where a few individuals, not the majority, it was a minority, um, but a few individuals were looking at a title, taking it out of context and commenting. Uh, I don't ask that people agree with me. All I ask is that they at least do me the, give me the respect of watching a minute of my videos. That's all, even 30 seconds, just so they know the context rather than jumping on what they think they've understood from a title. Uh, it's a pity I have to make that disclaimer, but yeah, it's irritating because to have to explain what a video is about when it should be obvious. Um, this is not about agreeing with me or not, it's just about not taking something out of context. So, um, this one is about the Tories' welfare threat, and that's what I'm calling it. You know, a lot of the press has sort of called it um, benefit, um, they, they've used this term benefits in, in the debate. To be honest, I've never liked the term benefits because I think it's misleading. I think it kind of um, promotes the narrative that there's something for nothing, that uh, people who are signing on just get money from the state and there's no obligations. Um, I mean, a benefit to me is if you, I don't know, join a, a club uh, and you get some sort of discount with membership of that club. That's a benefit. Um Getting money from the state as part of a safety net when you're on hard times to me is not a benefit. It's it, it is what it is. It's welfare. Um, people can think what they want about that, but I don't like the term benefits. I never have. Um, I accept that it's in the popular vernacular. It's probably not going to go away. But anyway, this is the headline from today's I newspaper. This is weekend twentieth uh, of April, twenty twenty four. Uh, I'll just show you the headline. Disability benefit faces cut in Tory manifesto's PM bets election on welfare blitz. Rishi Sunak announces overhaul of the personal independence payment, PIP, in an attempt to tackle what he calls signal culture and encourage people back to work. Future Britain's welfare state will be decided at this year's general election. The way that PIP and universal credit are decided will change. Tory manifesto will pledge, with some people having disability and sickness benefits reduced or removed. Labour Party so far silent on whether or not it agrees with government proposals. Number 10 wants to cut the cost of UK benefits, which has risen to, from 42 billion to 69 billion since the pandemic, and hopes for a clear dividing line with Labour. GPs welcome plan to stop them writing signals for depression and anxiety. Right, there's a lot to digest here, but I'm going to put my cards on the table. I'm going to read out more uh, based on some of the details here, but my gut feeling is the Tories have always, always, always wanted to find an excuse to crack down on claimants, just generally. I'm not talking about people who abuse the system. I'm not talking about uh, fraudsters. I just mean generally. I think the Tories have always stuck their nose up at all claimants, uh, despite what they say about trying to help people into work. I think it is part of the culture of the Tory party because they always say they're the party of... Um, aspiration and hard work etc so they look at unemployed people with disdain and not everyone signing on is unemployed there's a lot of people in part-time work and in some cases even balancing some more than one job at once but i do believe uh my gut feeling is the tories just stick their nose up at unemployed people um and i think they, they i i have no doubt no doubt that this is about pitching to the base. Now, I accept that the bill has risen and any responsible government would have to respond to that. But the pandemic was a unique situation. This isn't like the bill has risen because suddenly there's a lot of um, fraudsters out there. It, it's risen because the context has changed. You know, during the pandemic, that was exceptional. You know, everywhere was closed. The job centre was closed. Entertainment was closed. People were working from home. So it's not surprising that it would then go up when things return to normal in society, in the sense of people um, getting back to situations they were in before. So I think that immediately is misleading because it's sort of suggesting that suddenly there's this culture of lazy, dishonest people. Um, let me make a disclaimer. 
of course there will be some people who abuse the system. I've always acknowledged that. And I also accept that if people are physically fit um, and they're not really mentally, you know, on the edge, then, yeah, they do have responsibilities if you're getting money from the state. I've always accepted that. But what I really, really have a problem with is the language the Tories use and the way they, I think they basically treat welfare claimants as they look at them like they are no better than offenders doing community service. Now, if you're a shoplifter or you commit some so-called petty crime, you'll be sentenced to a community service, which I think is justified because you've hurt society. I honestly think the Tories believe that if someone's unemployed, they're basically the same. I firmly believe that. Um, and they'll, they'll never admit it. They'll, you know, they're smarter than to just say that. They'll always say, oh, but we're trying to help people in the work and the system doesn't help people. You know, they'll always frame it as if they're trying to help people. But you don't constantly stigmatize people and then dress it up as trying to help them. Um, in terms of the signal culture, is there some truth in it? There probably is. There probably are some people who are, you know, chancing um, and they're not really as sick as they're saying they are. There, there could be. You know, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to totally dismiss that and say there's no basis to it. But it is also an empirical reality that in 14 years of Tory rule, they have a long track record. Um, the DWP on their watch has hammered people. You know, people who have been critically ill have got threatening letters from the DWP. Anyone who's ever had to go through that system will know what I'm talking about, will know how bureaucratic it can be. Now, one of the things that's being proposed, just read this out if I can, yeah, universal credit claimants and part-time employment will have to work more hours or risk benefit deductions, and a new bill will seek to crack down on the rising problem with benefit fraud. Two issues there, well, benefit fraud, okay, if someone really is guilty, I have no problem with that, you know, if they're raking in thousands, and you do get extreme cases, I have no problem with prosecuting them, even in the worst cases, you know, a custodial sentence. Where they've you know taken thousands and thousands that they but there are cases of administrative error and we know from the horizon scandal how innocent people can be implicated so you know you can have a situation where a claimant has been accused of frauding the system they've done everything they've been asked to do but there's some administrative error on the computer or from someone not doing their job in the dwp and then the claimant is punished I think that is grossly unfair. It does happen, and I think uh, the government just doesn't care. They're ignoring that. And the other bit, you know, if they're in part-time work, they'll have to work more hours of risk deductions. Well, there's an inherent problem there. If someone's in part-time work, they have to disclose what hours they're working, obviously, so they can show the DWP what income they're already getting. Now, herein lies a flaw. If they're honest, if they say, yes, I'm doing more hours, like, I mean, take me, for example, I'm an English tutor. If I was signing on, I'm not. But if I was, um, I'd have to say, OK, I've got a new student, so that's a little bit more of an income. But it's a double-edged sword because then you might find yourself not eligible at all. So you're in a part-time work where it's a struggle, but you're just, you know, you're not quite meeting the threshold to be able to sign on. So you know they're they're putting people in this position whereby okay you need to take more work but then we're going to accuse you of benefit fraud because you know even if the person does declare that like i say the administrative error issue i could just see this rive for that sort of thing happening um i'll also say this you know i'm going to make another video uh probably today on what i consider corporate crime and corporate corruption now with the Horizon scandal, yes, the Sunak government has get, condemned it. Yes, he said there should be justice for postmasters. But I just don't think the Tories are as vocal or as keen to push that as they are this. I mean, they've done what they had to do. They condemned uh, the abuse of power. They've spoken of justice for the postmasters. But I just don't think it's really in their electoral interest to push that as hard as I think a lot of Tory voters have quite a bigoted attitude towards the unemployed quite frankly 
I think they honestly look at it and they they believe everything the Daily Mail tells them. Um, or in some cases, you know, what reality TV might tell them where you'll get extreme cases and it's held up to be the norm. Um, it, it angers me because it's not the whole picture. Um, I mean, when Jeremy Hunt, Mel Stride and others are talking about, you know, uh, we're going to make them work for the money. It's what they're not saying is there's already strict sanctions in place. It's true that there are people who don't have any obligations because their class is uh, fully disabled. Um, in terms of the doctors, you know, welcoming this, I guess it's just from their point of view, it's less paperwork. That's just a human thing. You know, they probably think I'm spending too much time doing this. Um, but an important part of this is that charities have warned this could push people over the edge. I'm, I'm not going to read everything out here. There's quite a lot of um, text just for keep this condensed um let me see if i could get a quote from one of the charities um dr sarah hughes the chief executive of mental health charity mind said to imply that the, the, it is easy both to be signed off work and then to access benefits is deeply damaging it's insulting to the 1.9 million people on a waiting list to get mental health support and to the gps whose expert judgment is being called into question Louise Murphy, a senior economist at the Resolution Foundation, said rising economic in, in activity, inactivity and especially rising inactivity due to long-term sickness is one of the biggest economic challenges Britain faces in the 2020s. Here's the problem that I think the government's being short-sighted about. They're going to say, well, you have someone who has mild anxiety and as Mel Stride says, you know, that's the ups and downs of life. What they're not factoring in is that someone who may have a history of depression or mild anxiety, if they're threatened by the DWP, if they're told you're going to lose, um, you're going to lose welfare money, you're going to be uh, forced to do this sort of job search, go for work capability assessments, which are notoriously degrading, and you know they, the way they're conducted, I think, is really um, stigmatizing. Um, you know, that could push people over the edge. So if someone has mild anxiety, inevitably their anxiety will increase. So it's it's kind of a double-edged sword. Now, what would I propose? Um, firstly, I would say that there always needs to be, they need to factor in the caveat, what impact will this have on the claimant? Will it push them over the edge? So Hunt's talking about mental health support, yet simultaneously stigmatizing people. I don't think the Tories are looking at the whole picture. I think this is a populist election move. Very cynical. Uh, waiting for Labour to make a response. I just hope Labour doesn't go down the same path to try and be populist, populist in a in the most cynical and callous way. Um, I accept that you know it's all money. They need to reduce the numbers, but I am just very wary of the way they're going about this by just saying, "Oh well, they're all." there's a sick note culture so they're all faking it or what Sunak's implying is it's a much smaller number than it, than it seems that are genuine um i'm not sure that's the case because we know more about mental health than we did in the past um the modern world is a stressful place stride talks about it's just the normal ups and downs of life but this again to me is a, that tory mindset of um one size fits all like, oh, I can handle it, so so can everyone else. And um, people are different, you know, um, and every single person has a unique life experience. No two people have had exactly the same experience. Um, mental health is a complex field. Now, I agree that mental health is maybe sometimes used as an excuse too much just when people don't want to be accountable. Um, I think it's certainly used too much in criminal cases. But the whole approach to this just reeks of Tory populism. It reeks of the 2010 campaign when they had those ghastly, and I've mentioned this before, those ghastly billboards, strivers versus scroungers. It's not quite as explicit as that, but um, I mean, one of the threats, for example, if, if someone's been on universal credit for a year, they'll just have their benefits cut full stop. But this isn't factoring in. There's another bit that they're totally ignoring, totally ignoring. In the end of the day, you can demand that the claimant, you know, uh, apply for as many jobs as possible and do all these things to find work. In the end of the day, 
it's up to employers whether whether to employ them or not. And so many people find a situation where they are actively looking for work and they still won't get feedback. They won't get those calls. They won't get called to an interview, even though they're doing everything humanly possible. And, you know, to, uh, to a lot of Tories, it's like, oh, well, you're not trying hard enough. Or to low life like Jeremy Kyle, it's, um, you know, you should just apply for anything. Here's the thing. Employers look at the experience people have. Inevitably, they're going to give the job to someone who has that experience. So for many people, it is a cycle. So yes, give them the training, but recognise that it isn't easy. What infuriates me is the way the Tories are implying this is easy. And anyone who does that should really, really look at the system. Anyone who thinks it's easy to sign on or to um, you know, go through the sort of demands that they make, I mean, with universal credit, when I done it, it, you have to prove 35 hours a week job search. There comes a point where you can only apply for so many jobs that you have experience for. It's a waste of time applying for jobs that you have no experience in because they just will not give you the job. In fact, that would be doing it to fill boxes. And this is something like this rudimentary figure, 35 hours. Who has worked that out? Who has said that's an appropriate number? I think it should be tailored for the individual, what sort of experience they have. Um, and I don't think it is. I think it's just a one size fits all attitude. Um, so I accept that the numbers need to come down. But remember, the pandemic was a unique situation. Of course, it's going to rise when things get back to normal. Um, I'm with the charities on this one because... I just don't think the Tories fully appreciate that. They can say what they want about mental health, but the degrading way the DWP threatens people, you know, there is a sanction culture there, and that's something no one is talking about, the way people are so easily sanctioned. The Tories imply that it's easy to sign on, um, and they imply that it's an easy life. Or they might not say that. They might actually say, well, we're, we're doing these measures in order to pitch to the base, but their base would say it's an easy life. You know, someone who reads the Daily Mail or the Daily Express on a regular basis, or the Sun, and blindly believes everything they come out with and thinks it's the whole picture, they have a certain perception of this, and some of it is, frankly, based on ignorance, because they don't know what it's like to go through that system. There's people who abuse it, I get that, they should be prosecuted and held to account. But I do not agree with this collective punishment measure that Sunak's proposing, basically. Um, I have a big problem with it. And if this makes me left wing on this issue, so be it. That's how I feel about it, because I just think it will send people over the edge and it's a disgrace. So if Labour does get in or close with this, I hope they're more open-minded about the situation that people are in and how hard it is to go through the system and not just come up with these populist campaign strategies to try and polarise and stigmatise people and then dress it up as trying to help them. Because the Tories do not consider the situation people are in. I mean, how many unemployed people have ministers spoken to? Mel Stride and co. How many unemployed people have they actually spoken to? I doubt many, if any.